Today in the joy of editing, we're going to take a look at some more of my favorite new features in the latest update for TK9, that is TK9 version 3. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Last Wednesday, I showed you my top five favorite new features found in the latest update of TK9 version 3. And this week, I'm going to show you some more of my favorite new features, just so that we can get familiar with the new update for TK9. The image I'm using today is from Art David. Now, I've edited this image in the past, but I just thought I'd use it today just to demonstrate some of these new features. By the way, there's a special launch sale going on over at Tony Kuiper's web store for TK9 version 3. Now, you can save 25% off your entire purchase. That includes the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, along with training videos. So please take advantage of that savings. But I have a special favor to ask you. If you'll use my promo code, this is a special launch sale promo code, DK. 25 add that to your cart at checkout when you do that you're going to save that 25 percent off your entire purchase but you're also going to be helping me out i make a small commission when you use that promo code and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way so i thank you for that while you're over at the web store check out sean bagshaw's two new courses on luminosity masking he has one for basic and one for advanced they are excellent, and I highly recommend that you pick them up, and you'll save 25% off. Again, please use my promo code DK25. I really appreciate it. And I have links in the description below that will take you right over to Tony Kuiper's web store. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do, you see this person in the image right here. I'd like to remove them. This button right here, R-E-M-C-A-F, this stands for Remove and Content Aware Fill. This button used to be called DNF for Delete and Fill. And I believe it also worked with Content Aware Fill. I find that Photoshop's remove tool is far superior. So now we have remove content aware fill. You can still use content aware fill. If you're using content aware fill, you need to make a selection first and then just hold your command or control key down and click on this button. I don't want content aware fill, so I'll just click on this button without holding down command or control. We get a blank pixel there and we are set up to use Photoshop's remove tool, which I love. Now this is important with the remove tool. You want to make sure you have sample all layers checked on or this will not work. So in advance, set that on. I always leave sample all layers checked on. And I also like to check on remove after each stroke. And then it's just simply a matter like this person right here. I'll just paint over them like so, and we can remove them and they're gone. And there's some equipment here, I believe. I'm just going to paint over this area right here and remove that. And now we have this blank pixel layer. It's called remove. I can shut this off. Here's before and here is after. So I think that's a great new addition to TK9 version 3. I still have the remove tool. It looks a little funny right here. I'm just going to paint over this area one more time. Yeah, that looks better. And now for my next favorite new feature, and these are in no particular order. And this one is for the color grading tool. Now, right now, I'm going to make the background layer active by clicking on it. And here's a new feature. If you hold the command or control key down and click on this color grading tool button, it'll put the color grading layer right to the top of the layer stack. So watch, I'm going to command or control click this and you see it right at the top. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer for now. I'll click on the trash can and I'm going to close the color grading tool right here by clicking on the X. So now if I'm in the background layer and I don't command or control click the color grading tool, whatever layer is active, it'll put the color grading tool right above it. So I'll click on the color grading tool button and you'll notice there's that layer right above it. So that's the way that works. But if you ever want to put it at the top of the layer stack, hold the command or control key down before clicking the color grading tool button. I won't make any adjustments on this color grading tool. I'm just showing you the way it works now when you're adding it to a layer stack. Now, right now I have this color grading tool. If I click the plus, I'll add another color grading tool right above it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I want to show you what else we can do. I'm just clicking on the trash can on the combo panel. So now here's a new feature. If you're on a color grading tool, come up to the plus on the color grading tool and hold down your command or control key and click the plus, it'll put a color grading tool to the top of the layer stack. So 
that is nice. I'm going to go ahead and delete this color grading tool layer and I'll come down here and I will delete this one. And now let me show you one other feature here with the color grading tool. And now let me go ahead and click on this add color layer and make it active. And this happens a lot when you're working sometimes. You may be checking some things out in your different layers and you want to add, say, like a new color grading tool, but you want it to go to the top of the layer stack, but you forgot to click the top layer to make it active. And so we're on this layer right here. And so what I'll do is close out the color grading tool. I'll just click on the X and let's say I want to color grade the trees. But remember, I forgot to go to the top of the layer stack and make it active. So I'll click on the color mask button and let's pick a color here in the trees like right here and I'll click OK. And maybe we'll lighten that up a little bit like that. And let's say we want to output this to a color grading tool. Now, right now, if I just click on the color grading tool, it'll put it right above that add color layer. But here's what's new. If you forget which layer you were on, but you want to make sure it always goes to the top of the layer stack, hold your command or control key down and click on the color grading tool button. And just like that, it's at the top of the layer stack. Now I could click on the midtone button and maybe let's give those midtones a little bit of a color grade like that. Maybe I'll lighten them up a little bit and maybe give them a little bit more color. Maybe we'll warm them up a little bit like that. It's a nice fall scene. Let's go a little warmer like right there. Now I'll shut this layer off. Here's before and here is after. So now in this latest version of TK9, we can now make sure our color grading tool goes to the top of our layer stack if we want it to. I'll click X to close the color grading tool panel. Nothing changes on the color grading layer. And now for my next favorite new feature in TK9 version 3, and that deals with a depth map. Sometimes I like to use a depth map for balance and contrast on images when I want to show depth for the background as well as the foreground, or sometimes I like to use it when I'm adding detail to an image. But now this is a big time saver. If you command or control click this button right here, what happens is you will get a depth map as you can see right here. Now this would be a background depth map see the dark area at the front, you would need to invert this to turn this into a foreground depth map. And I like to have a background and a foreground depth map. But now what we can do is simply click this one button right here. We'll save as channel plus inverse and watch what happens. I'll click this button and notice in my channels, it says depth map background subject foreground saved out as channels, which now I could use those with a color grading tool or any type of adjustment I would so choose. But let me show you how I would set this up for a color grading tool. I'll need two color grading tool layers above this layer. Now, this is a color grading tool layer. Now, I want to show you something. Whenever you have a color grading tool layer and you want to add another one above that color grading tool layer, you must hold down your shift key and click on the color grading tool button in the multi mask panel. And you see I get a new color grading tool layer above that. And now I want to add another one so I can come up to the color grading tool and click on the plus. And now I have two color grading tool layers. This top layer is active and I want to apply the background depth map to it. So all I need to do here is I'm going to hold my command or control key down and click on the layer mask calculator. That just keeps it open. And what I'll do is click on depth map background and I'll click this button to apply it. And now I'll click on the color grading tool layer below it. Click on subject foreground, click this button to apply it. And now I can simply close the layer mask calculator because I don't need it right now. And I would normally add these two layers at the very start of the edit, not at this point, but I just want to show you this new feature. So then I could come and click on the midtone button and the depth map will control what is getting adjusted when I start to like lighten up the midtones or click on the shadows and darken down the shadows. And the same when I would come to the top layer for the background, you know, I could darken down the background a little bit in the midtones like so and maybe click on the shadow button and darken up the shadows back there just a little bit in the background. And now I'm letting these depth maps control 
how this image is getting adjusted. So that's pretty cool. On to another favorite feature. I need to get to the multi mask panel. I'll click X on the color grading tool. Nothing changes on that color grading layer. And this new feature is great whenever you're working with, say, like a zone mask or a color mask. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click on the zone mask button right here. And let's say I want to target some of these darker tones in the water and I want to darken them up a bit more. So I'm going to click right here and click OK. And now what I want to do is really tighten that up. So I'll take this tightness slider and I'll drag it into the left to really just target those areas right there. You see that? And then what I can do is here's the new feature. You see this levels adjustment. If you double click it, which I'll do right now, I'm double clicking levels. It'll automatically adjust the mask to give you a full representation of black to pure white to give you a much stronger mask. And now at this point, let's say I could output this to a burn tool. So I'll click on the right side of the burn tool. And then I could just come here with say maybe a 30% brush at a very soft edge. And I could come and, you know, burn some of the darker areas down in the water like that. So that's a really cool feature being able to do an auto levels adjustment on say like a color mask or a zone mask and get a more aggressive adjustment but still targeting the area that you selected that's really nice i'll show you a couple more and we'll be done i'm going to go ahead and deselect my selection by clicking this button on the combo panel you also find that on the cx panel by the way i like to work with adobe's camera raw filter now this button right here called cam raw used to be called acr but now here's a new feature which can really speed up your workflow if you like to work with a camera raw filter. Now you could be on any adjustment layer. Let's say I'm on this add color layer here. When you click on the cam raw button, what it'll do, it'll stamp all your layers together, turn them into a smart object and open up camera raw for you all with one button click, which is a real time saver. So I'm on the add color layer. I'll click this button you'll note that it stamped all my layers together, turned it into a smart object also, and sends me into the camera raw filter where I usually like to use it to add some detail to some of my images. So I'll take the texture adjustment. You'll find this under effects. If effects isn't open, just click right here. It opens up your effects and we'll add some texture. Let's say I wanna pull out some detail on some of these rocks on this side and this side. I'll add some clarity and remember this is a smart object. I can always come back and make some readjustments. I can click okay. This will send me back into Photoshop. Now the detail is coming over the entire image, but I'll click this button right here on the combo or CX panel and put a black hide all mask on there. And now I'll click on my white brush button and let's say at 100% opacity, I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. It's got a nice soft edge on it and I'll just paint texture on these rocks. You see that like right here, back into here, maybe a little bit of texture on here. I can come over on this side and maybe add some texture in these areas like right here. But isn't that cool? That's the uh, new camera raw button. When you click it, it stamps all your layers together, moves it to the top of the layer stack, creates a smart object and sends you into the camera raw filter. A big time saver and it speeds up your workflow. Now the final new feature I wanna show you is an update to vignette, both freehand as well as basic vignette. And that is the ability to add a light vignette or a color vignette along with your dark vignette. Now I do a lot of flower photography. This is one of my images. And sometimes what I like to do is add a colored vignette around the edges of the image or maybe a light vignette. But to add a dark vignette, all you do is on vignette, just click the button, it'll make you a dark vignette. Or if you're using freehand vignette, you know, draw your vignette with a lasso tool or whatever, and then click freehand vignette, you'll get a dark vignette. But here's how you add a light vignette. I'll show you how to do that with the basic vignette. Hold your command or control key down and click on vignette. A Gaussian blur comes up. I always just click OK. And now you'll notice we have a light vignette. Let me shut this vignette off. Here's before, here's after. Isn't that really cool? And of course, you have the opacity that defaults at 30%. If you want it stronger, you can drag this to the right or to the left to make it not as strong. So you have that option there. I'm gonna shut this one off. Now let me show you how to add a color vignette. This time I'll use the freehand vignette. Grab your lasso tool. You can type L or click the lasso tool button. And I'll just draw a freehand vignette around this area right like that. And then all you need to do is hold down your shift key 
and click on freehand vignette. And what you want to do is pick a color. So I'm going to pick, say, some of this light color right here and click OK. And now the Gaussian blur comes up and I always click OK. And just like that, you've added a nice color wash as a vignette. So let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Now you can always double click this solid color adjustment layer and maybe change this to a different color or make it lighter, more saturated, whatever you want, which is really cool, and then click OK. Now, here is the before, and here's the after, and don't forget you have the opacity. You could take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and stop where you think it really looks really pretty. And I think right there, I'll click right here on the eye to shut off the color vignette. Here's before and here's after. But isn't that cool? We now can do color vignettes, light vignettes, or dark vignettes all with the new TK9 version 3 update. I love it. Well, there you go, everyone. I showed you some more of my favorite new features in TK9 version 3. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.